AI video tools are now more realistic than ever before, but if you're only using one tool to generate your footage, it's not going to look realistic. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create the most realistic AI video possible. We've tested all of the creative AI tools on the market to give you what we believe to be the very best workflow for getting maximum quality. And the best part is this workflow is up to eight times cheaper than some of the most popular tools on the market. I'm excited to share these secrets with you. Welcome to Curious Refuge. Let's get to it. Okay, so step one is to create our images. There are a lot of AI image tools on the market. We're going to use Midjourney for a variety of reasons, but mainly because it's very realistic, very quick, and cost efficient. So we're inside of Midjourney here, and of course, we could go in here type in a prompt and start generating our images. The problem is it'd be very inconsistent. And if you're making a film and you want all of your shots to go together, that's not really ideal. So of course you have the explore page and you can go in here and click on specific images to get an idea of how people prompt for that aesthetic. Now that can be a helpful way to begin to explore the process of prompting. The problem is a lot of times people get lucky and if you use their prompt again and again, you might get completely different results. So how do you create consistent images? Well, the first thing that you're going to do is go to the mood boards tab here on the left. Now a mood board is exactly what the name implies. It's simply a folder that you can use to drag and drop images to get consistent styles. So if you have a bunch of images that are in the style you're looking for, when you prompt inside of Midjourney using the mood board aesthetic, it's going to create images that are more consistent. So you can see here from these images, I have this kind of general color grade and aesthetic that I'm going for, for this specific film project. And the best part is you can upload images from the internet, you can add links to outside images, and then you can also bring in images from other mood boards to create an overall aesthetic that fits your personality. If you don't know where to source images or styles for the projects that you're working on, the Midjourney Explore page is a great place to start. So now that we have our mood board established, it's time to create our prompt. So first things first, go ahead and click on the use in prompt button, and that will allow you to basically use the aesthetic from the mood board for the entire prompting process. So now it's time to type in a prompt and get our images. I'm going to use a pretty standard prompting technique where we define the shot, the composition, and then add in supporting details. So we have a medium shot of a woman looking through a storefront window filled with typewriters, her reflection overlapping with them, glass distortion, light refraction, layered depth, cinematic urban realism. You can really get as in-depth as you want, but the cool thing is because we're using a mood board, you don't have to go into all of the additional prompting to get consistency. And we'll go ahead and select this use in prompt button here. When you do that, you're going to bring in the aesthetic from the mood board you are working on. So the next thing is we want to define a character that we want inside of our film project. If we just prompted in this very generic prompt, we would get a different character again and again. So to get consistent characters inside of Midjourney, all you have to do is go to the add images button and go over here to Omni reference. So from here, we now have the ability to upload the image of the person we want to generate again and again. So for our example, I'm going to use this image of this woman here. So we'll go ahead and take that image and drag and drop it directly inside of Midjourney. And let's just double check that it's in the Omni reference section. So the final thing that we wanna do before we click enter is to add in a quick little code. So I'll do dash dash R space, and this will basically repeat our prompt. So we will generate more than one generation at a time. It's always better just to go through as many iterations as possible. A lot of times you may need to look at dozens of images before you find the one that works for you. So I'll do dash dash R space five and go ahead and click enter. Okay, and let's take a look at our images here. So you can see that the color grading and aesthetic really came through and there's much more consistency than if we just generated in 
inside of Midjourney alone without defining the mood board. And a lot of these images look good. Of course, some of them are kind of strange, like this one or this one. A lot of times you'll have to go back and re-edit your prompt. It's entirely part of the process. So now that we've generated our images, it's time to up-res them. The default images that you get inside of Midjourney aren't in the highest resolution, so if you try to animate those low-res images, you'll lose out on quality because the artifacting inside of those images are going to come through in the final video. Inside of Midjourney, once you have an image here, you do have the ability to upscale using the subtle button. So if we go ahead and click on that button, it will upscale to our Midjourney account. However, the problem is whenever you upscale directly inside of Midjourney, especially when you're upscaling people, if you look at the qualities of their skin, it's going to come across as much more waxy, almost like they're a plastic character. There's a much better workflow for upresing our characters online. So I'm going to take the low resolution image from Midjourney and go ahead and download that to our computer. Next, we're going to go to a tool called Enhancer.ai. You'll find a link below this video and go ahead and click sign in. Enhancer is a tool that specifically focuses on skin tones and adds in realistic texturing in the up process. So inside of Enhancer, we're going to go to the Detailed section here, and you can select face or body depending on how much of the image you are up -resing. Even if you're in face mode, it will still up other aspects of your frame, which is very helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and click the Reset button to get rid of the test image. Let's go ahead and click on the Image Upload button and bring in that image from Midjourney. Now, the cool thing about using Enhancer is you can restrict certain parts of your character to be manipulated. So if you don't want the eyes or the lips to be manipulated, because a lot of times characteristics of a person's identity are really carried in the eyes and lips, you can select the checkboxes and it won't actually affect those things. But it all just depends on the character and the project that you're working on. So when you're ready to enhance the image, go ahead and click Enhance Face. And after a few minutes, we have this image here and you can see there's just a ton of detail in her face. The lips look very realistic, the skin tone, especially with the freckles that she has. There's even just a slight blemish here that really helped to reinforce the overall realism. And a lot of secondary qualities like the texturing on the clothing, the hair strands, and even the quality of the bokeh really shine through whenever you use this tool. Now we went in and up a bunch of different aesthetics and styles using this workflow. Now before we move on to animating our images, I want to note just one caveat here. If you have an image that doesn't feature a realistic human as the primary character, there is another workflow that can save you even more money. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So we have this image here of a Viking foot from Midjourney, and to up this specific image, I'm going to use a tool called Gigapixel. It's created by the team at Topaz Labs, and you may be familiar with their tools. They essentially are specifically designed for up images and videos. So I'm going to drag and drop our image into Gigapixel, and the cool part is you basically can purchase this tool and then you own it forever. You don't have to pay a yearly licensing fee. You don't have to pay for credits. I really like the fact that I can own this tool outright and basically generate an infinite number of times. So inside of Gigapixel here, you can see we have a few different options for up this image to as big as we want. I'll go ahead and do times four. That's going to give us beyond 4K quality, which will be perfect. And for the model, we'll go ahead and select the standard model and just make sure that sharpen, denoise, and fixed compression are all the way off. We want to get maximum quality and not have any weird artifacting inside of our image and go ahead and click export. Okay, so now comes the fun part. It's time to animate our images using an AI video tool. There are a lot of AI video tools on the market, and if you're part of the Curious Refuge community, you probably have tested and experienced a lot of these tools for yourself. The big question is, which one is best? And the short answer is, Seed Dance is the best AI video tool for getting the most realistic footage possible. Here's a few different examples to illustrate our point. So for this scene here, I have this image of this woman in an old-timey, I'm guessing like London in the 1700s aesthetic, and we went in and animated this specific image in a bunch of the AI video tools. So here's the result from Kling. It's scary, terrified. And you can see it's 
not that bad. It gets a little sharp there towards the end, and then it actually generated a realistic lip sync in Chinese, which is kind of interesting. We also have this video from Luma, which completely change the tone of the image. We also have this shot from Minimax that it looks realistic, but I think that the contrast is a little too much. And then we have this shot from Runway here, which is kind of distorted, and there's also just not a lot of life in the character. We must be careful. If anyone discovers- We have this generation from Google VO3, which the physics look realistic, but the hyper sharpening in the edges is not really coming across as realistic. And we have this generation from Seed Dance, and you can see there's just a ton of resolution. A lot of the details are coming through inside of the video. Now, just to illustrate the point in a few different scenarios, here's a shot of a knight riding on a horse, and basically we wanted to lift a fist in the air at the end. And we have Gen 4, which, looks okay but you know the overall dynamics of the footage and especially his face there i have no idea what's happening he has like cursed eyes we have this generation from Kling. It looks okay with the larger physics, but when you really begin to zoom in on the guy's face, it gets really distorted. We have this shot from Luma. It's very muddy, not the best result. We have this shot from Minimax, which again looks okay, but the faces get distorted. We have this shot from Google VO3. And again, that hyper sharpening problem is really taking away from the realistic physics. And then finally, we have this shot from Seed Dance. I think the physics look great. There's a lot of details. It got the prompt that we were looking for. Overall, it did a really good job. So long story short, using Runway, Luma, or Minimax is just kind of out of the question if you want realistic footage. The physics of using Kling can be good, but the distortion on the faces, again, make it really not the best tool for generating realistic footage. Google VO3 is incredible at generating physics and most importantly, realistic lip sync with your characters. So if you need your characters to say something specific, Google VO3 is the best tool, but you're going to have some resolution issues whenever you upscale it beyond 720p directly inside of Google's platform. And that leaves us with Seed Dance. Seed Dance allows you to generate your footage natively in 1080p. You also can generate your shots up to 12 seconds long, which is a huge advantage because a lot of the tools limit you to five seconds. Seed Dance is also about 60 cents per generation compared to using Google VO3, which is about 250. And the other thing that you really need to consider is whenever you're generating footage, it's probably going to take you multiple generations. So just because it's 250 once doesn't mean that you're going to get the video footage. You may need to generate five to 10 generations before you actually get the clip that you're looking for, and that can get expensive very quickly. So to animate our footage, I'm going to hop over to Fall. AI and go to their Seed Dance Pro section. You'll find a link below this video. So to animate our images using Seed Dance, we're going to go ahead and select the upload button and we'll bring in our upresed image. So now it's time to direct the animation. I always like defining the camera shot first and then explain the overall movements that I want from my character. So for our prompt, we'll say a handheld camera shot of a woman who's looking through a window gazing at some typewriters. She then brushes her hair and looks away. You can see we have specific direction for what we want our character to do. Some people like using AI to enhance their prompts, and other people will even go in and change their prompts into coding language to specifically get an output from the AI video tool. We've tested all of the workflows, and long story short, be as specific as possible. If you feel you can be specific with just your own native prompting, that's great. If you want to use an AI tool for helping you to iterate and creatively expand your prompts, that's great too. It really just depends on the natural language prompting that you're bringing to the table. So when you're ready to generate the video, go ahead and click the run button. So after about a minute, we have this video clip here, and I really like the way that the reflection in the window stays composited on the right plane. The typewriters are coming across as more realistic as she brushes through her hair and looks off in the distance. It looks pretty darn good, so I think that this was a good result from Seed Dance. Now, let's take a look at some of our other video clips here. So we have a woman at a coffee shop looking around. Looks pretty good. She's walking around a busy city square. Not bad. We have an establishing shot of like this Viking 
headquarters here. Pretty good. Shot of a man walking. You can see the physics of the water displacement looks very, very good. We have the shot of this woman looking around again in a Viking village. Not too bad. And then we have this Viking guy looking around. And you can see the physical dynamics of the background and the water look really good. I don't know how he just like magically summoned that spear there. So you may want to cut around that. And of course, it's all about iteration. It may take you five to 10 times before you get the video clip that you're looking for. So now that we have our video clips animated, let's take it one step further. So the video we just exported is in 1080p. But the problem is we want to get even more quality because we want to use them in our film and advertising projects. And I should note, if you want to learn how to create your own films or advertising projects, be sure to check out our courses over at Curious Refuge. We've trained artists at every major studio, and our students are in over 172 countries. If you want to learn inside the world's premier AI filmmaking and storytelling community, we would love to have you. So let's take our video clip here and up res it to 4K. And in order to do that, I'm going to use a tool called Topaz Video AI. So I have our video clip here. I'm going to drag and drop it into Topaz Video AI. And by default, it's going to keep our output resolution inside of that native 1080p format. So all you have to do is select the drop down menu here. You can go to two times upscale. You can select the 4K preset. It's entirely up to you. I'll just go ahead and select the 4K preset. And for the AI model, there's a bunch of different options that you can use. We've tested all of the models and found that Proteus is the best all around AI video enhancement model. Now, the one thing that you really want to avoid is having this recover detail slider any higher than zero. You don't want there to be any sort of artifacting or resolution loss inside of your final video. So just make sure that's set to zero. And then at the very bottom, we're in 24 frames per second, which is perfect because we're working on a film project. Now, all you have to do is go to the export as button and export the video clip to your computer. So I have a few different video clips here. Here's one of the woman kind of modeling in a city and it looks very good. Here's the hero shot of her looking at a typewriter. Again, looks very, very realistic inside of the coffee shop. Love the reflections there. You can see a lot of the hair pieces on the sweater are really coming through. There's really crisp quality there. Looks very nice. Walking around the city, again, tons of texturing on the clothing. The bokeh looks very realistic. And then we have a few different video shots here. Now, the last step, and this is completely optional, is to take your video clips into a video editing application and then apply either a slight color grade or film grain to just just composite everything together and to give it just kind of those camera qualities that come across as realistic. For our example, I'm going to use Premiere Pro and essentially I just dragged in our video clips and put them inside of a timeline. So I have some video footage here and it's going to be very hard to tell on YouTube, but basically it's a film grain. It loops. It's about five seconds long. If you want to find really good film grains, be sure to click the link below this video. There's a ton of resources out there for finding very good and realistic film grains. So I'll drag and drop the video footage into our timeline and now we'll go to effect controls and from here we'll go down to opacity and change our blending mode to overlay this will get rid of the gray parts of our image and then kind of bring in details in the light and dark parts of the film grain and i don't like keeping it at a hundred percent because the grain is just a little too thick it almost comes across as like a grungy movie but we'll keep it at 30 percent just to bring in just enough of the grain qualities to make it come across as realistic and then of course you'll want to duplicate the film grain to be the entire duration of your video clip and at the end of the day that gives you the video clip that you're watching now. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video on how to get the most realistic AI video footage possible. Of course, if you want to learn how to create world-class AI films, be sure to check out our courses over at Curious Refuge, and you can subscribe to our free newsletter where we share weekly AI film news directly to your inbox. And you can like and subscribe here on YouTube to get the latest tutorial and news directly here on this platform. Thank you so much for watching this video, and if you ever create a cool AI project, be sure to share it in the comments.